right, well, hey, my name's Kyle, and welcome to what I believe is the last small group leader training video uh, as we close out the month of April. I work out at the Big Creek staff for Calvary Church. One of my roles is adult small groups, and it's a pleasure to get to be here with you this morning and to just get to uh, contribute to what has already been uh, an incredible last several weeks of training from uh, people all over Calvary staff uh, just speaking into the importance of adult small groups and uh, how to lead them well. And so first off, I just want to say thank you for continuing to lead and for all that you've done up until this point in leading your small group. I know for me, uh, I lead a small group on Thursday nights, and so it was a little weird having to adjust to doing things remotely. I, I felt like it took us about two weeks for us to kind of really have a breakthrough and for it to kind of feel normal. Um, and uh, we, we've kind of gotten into a routine now, but believe me, uh, I am really looking forward to small groups uh, being able to meet in homes again. And um, maybe if you notice here, I've uh, got my Cardinals hat on. And by this point in time, we would have been celebrating or already, already have celebrated opening day for the Cardinals season. And as we know, that along with a bunch of other things got postponed. Uh, but according to the St. Charles County website, if any of you are wanting to keep up with uh, updates on developments and stuff for uh, COVID-19 things, um, as April ends and uh, May approaches, uh, hey, by the middle of the month, we might be able to start meeting uh, as small groups in homes, uh, as long as we're practicing certain um, you know, social distancing measures and uh, keeping our, our groups below a certain group size. So please be sure that you're kind of staying up to date with the county website for all that. And as we have more information, obviously, we'll be in communication with you. But uh, but yeah, it, it's we'll be celebrating our, our opening day for um, being able to meet as small groups in the very near future. And we're really, really excited about that. And so uh, for this last video that I'm going to be doing, what we're going to be talking about is just a way for you to be able to get your small group started again and some helpful tips just to remember as you lead your small group. And so what I'm gonna be talking about today is just four quick application points for your small group uh, when it gets started back. Number one, uh, keep it simple. Number two, remember what a small group is. Uh, number three, embrace your role. And then number four, being mindful of the future. So number one, keeping it simple. Uh, at some point in time, in the next few weeks or next month, uh, you're going to have the opportunity. It's going to be open for us to have small groups meet back up again. And maybe for some of you, that's super exciting. Maybe for others of you, you're a little nervous because, you know, it's kind of like when you see a friend that you haven't seen in a while and you kind of wonder about, oh, man, what if we don't pick right back up where we left off or whatever. Well, I just want to remind you, man, when you get your group back together, just, just keep it simple. Maybe just do something like a barbecue or a get together or, or a hangout night or a game night um, when you start things back, just so that way, uh, you know, we can kind of just recognize how things have been for everybody for the last two months and uh, just, you know, take some time just to enjoy being in each other's company again. Um, Please do be mindful and respectful of those who uh, maybe when your group starts meeting back are not comfortable meeting there. And so maybe most or half of your group is going to be there present at your house. And maybe there'll be a few other people who, for whatever reason, uh, are still uh, coming in remotely. Uh, just be open to that. We, we want to be really respectful and, and mindful of, of different people's uh, situations. And so... When you start back, keep it simple, keep it social, and uh, maybe give it a week or two before you kind of jump right back into whatever it is that uh, you guys were doing or, or were about to do. Number two, remember what a small group is. We call a small group a gathering of 14-ish people <laughs> who remain together to have their lives shaped by God through his scriptures in community. Okay, so what this doesn't mean is that we expect every small we expect uh, small groups to be like a seminary course? That's not what we expect at all. Uh, however, the reason that we do provide resources, whether it be small group questions or pointing you toward resources that we approve of, um, this is why we point you toward those because we do expect small groups to 
be more than just a group full of people who maybe have some surface level-ish conversation, maybe mention a Bible passage, and then have a chicken wig and pray and close and go home at night. Oh, we, we believe that God has called us to more than that. We also, don't ex we also don't want you to feel like your small group is professional counseling, okay? If you have a person or persons that really need professional help, please be sure to let us know because we'd like to be able to get that person the help that they need and the place for them to receive it might not be at your small group, okay? Um, so please be sure if you have situations that uh, kind of need special attention like that. And also please make sure that you're protecting people in your group from being professionally counseled by that person in your group all the time. Maybe it can even be used sometimes, right? We want small groups to be a place where people feel, people feel open and honest to share without someone always trying to fix everything in their life two seconds after they've said something. So please keep that in mind. Uh, number three, please embrace the role that God has given you within your group. Um, we are not asking you to be a company guy for the church who has to defend, uh, explain, and define every single definition of things that happen within the church. So if someone's bringing up questions that you really don't know how to answer or you're not really sure about that, please always feel free, and we encourage you strongly to just refer them to church leadership or church staff. So that, that way, if there's any uh, confusion or questions that we can answer, we can do so in a really helpful and efficient way. If you have a person that's being overly critical of the church, uh, just because of the mandates of Scripture, we would encourage you to tell them to go to the people that they're having issues with because we don't want your small group to become a toxic place for uh, people to just always kind of be ripping or bashing the church. And so maybe the best thing for that person would be for them to actually have to have a face-to-face -face conversation with somebody and say, hey, these are some concerns or critiques I'm kind of having lately. I'd like to talk to someone about that great. We'd love to meet with them. But small group isn't really always the place for that. So please be sure to remember that. Uh, also, your role within the small group uh, is to help lead and facilitate discussion. Maybe enlist some other people to help out with other really cool things that your small group could be doing. Like, for instance, if there is something that uh, once or twice a semester that you think would be really good for your small group to go serve in, great. Have someone be in charge of finding out what that would be and what that would look like and the details of it. Something we do in my small group is once or twice a semester, we go out and just go hang out. We've gone to Top Golf before. We've had board game nights. And you know what? Sometimes I entrust it to someone else to be in charge of that. So that way I'm not doing it all the time. Um, and then uh, within your small group too, uh, don't be afraid in your role to uh, call people to task if you see people kind of not really transitioning back in. We want to be respectful of people that need to or that uh, uh, feel, the, um, feel the need to, to practice some social distancing. However, if you keep noticing that they keep saying that they're going to make it back to group, they've just been really busy, and you're seeing on their Facebook account, like the reason they're not making a group is because they're arriving at other places, don't be afraid to call people to task and just have a sit-down conversation with them. I know there have been times in the past where I've done that, and those conversations usually always go really well. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 through 25 says this, Let us hold fast to the hope we profess without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another toward love and good deeds, not neglecting meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other all the more as we see the day drawing near. Uh, meeting together is something that's really important, and while we do realize that there are times and there are situations that block people from being able to do that consistently, we want to make sure that we're having really open and honest conversations with folks in our group. So that way we can know for sure, like, hey, if I haven't seen them for a while, like, it's a legitimate reason, and it's not just because of, you know, the normal thousand list excuse that, you know, sometimes we can create or we hear other people create. So number four. Um, as you get ready to start back up, be mindful of the future. Is your group getting too large? Uh, maybe it's time for you and your group to think about splitting in half and adding a few new couples into those two new groups. Maybe it's time for a couple who you really see as a great potential leader to uh, take another couple with them and go out and start a new group. Please let us know about maybe who those people might be, uh, who, who those people might be and how we can be praying for them and talking to them. Or, hey, you know what? You're kind of like, maybe I need to go start a new group. 
um, hey, be praying about that. I mean, if um, it's not like there's some spiritual mandate that that's in place here, but you know what? If your if your group is is healthy and and growing and thriving and man, like this really cool thing that just kind of started with a few people has blossomed into something that's too big now. Like, dude, <laughs> we want to see some more of that. We want to. We want to see God bless some other people with uh, what he's been helping you create as far as a culture and a group with the small group that you're in. So please be sure that every year, every semester, that you're keeping an open and willing spirit with the Lord and just saying like, God, what's what's maybe the future of this group? Um, are we getting too big? Do we need to think about expanding out? Um, I realize depending on how you're wired, this conversation is either inspiring to you or you're wanting to throw something at my face. And I just want to let you know, either one is okay, but please just be sure that you're taking it up to the Lord. So in closing, as you're getting ready to start opening day back for your group, keep it simple. Remember what a small group is and isn't. Embrace your role and enlist others to help you. And four, be mindful of the future. Thank you for all that you do and blessings to you as you get ready to start your small group group up very soon. God is good, and we look forward to seeing him lead us back into the new normal in the days ahead. Have a great week. We'll see you when we see you.